All right. Uh, allegedly, the lab guy, Mike, made a couple changes that we're going to try out today to see. He's working with that. One possibility is we might revert to an earlier version of Visual Studio. Um, so um, we'll see if that works. Um, ideally, if we can run both versions of Video Stu Visual Studio, that would probably be the best, but we'll, we'll, we'll see. So anyhow, um, I'm not optimistic, but I was able to get in briefly today, but using sort of the workaround that was discovered by someone in this class. And so hopefully it goes right. Thursday was a horrible class day for me in here and in my later class. I was glad to get home. So I hope today is not a repeat of that. Okay, where we left off, we left off by creating uh, a maintenance page where we could eventually edit a faculty person. And I don't really, really remember how far we got, uh, but we can try it and see. So, let me see, did I start recording? Yes, I did. Okay, I think we got to it from faculty list. So I'm going to set that as my start page. And let me run it. Here we go. And we're able to go in and edit stuff. But it would be nice if we could do validation on it as well. All right. So validation so that it's required and so on. And we did all that in the other example. Um, we might want to do things like change the password to uh, a password field so that, uh, it's not visible and so on. Um, at any rate, the one I want to focus on is division ID. Because right now, division ID forces you to enter in the actual division ID. Now, if you remember, I talked about last time how even if you may think something requires multiple fields or multiple tables, if you are maintaining a, a database table, make that the only table on your select, and things generally go better. So what do you do with something like division ID? Because division ID should be pulling the name from the division table. Well, you make a template column for it, is what you do. And remember, anytime you want to deviate from the norm um, of the default behavior of a grid view or a details view, you make a template column out of it. So let's go and let's attempt that, knock on wood, that we are able to get this to work. Um, Let me go in and add a data connection. Okay, now the little thing goes on, yay. And it goes right back off again. And I'm going to hit refresh, and it goes on. And I'm going to go here to my grid view. And I'm going to, I don't want to configure data source, I want to edit columns. So I'll go and I will make, oh, my mistake. I don't want to do it on this page. I want to do it on this page. All right. So I'll go and edit columns. Looks like I'll be hitting refresh a bunch of times. Uh, I need to go and refresh schema. This is where it was hanging up last time. Because if you remember, if I look at the columns, 
Because my original select was select star, and I'm auto-generating the fields, it's not showing me each individual field, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here and refresh schema. Yes, I do. And there I got all the columns. We got further than I did Thursday. I'm not going to take any more risk. I'm going to end class now and we can, you know, we'll try again Thursday. No, just kidding. Now I want to go and I want to make it a template. So I'll go into edit fields and I will click on division ID and I'll convert to a template column. Again, this isn't doing database operations, but uh, uh, so it should be safe. But I'm going to convert it to a template column. So I click OK. All right, so that's a template column. Now what I want to do, though, I want to edit. I'm going to redo this, right, because in regenerating the um, columns for the, the details view, it got rid of my enable editing and deleting. So I'll put those two back in for now. We'll worry about inserting later on, okay? So, I'm going to go in and edit templates, and my template that I want to edit is why don't I see that field? Let me end. Let me look again. I convert it to a template cow field, right? Okay, weird. I thought I had done that before. Oh well, if that's the biggest of my problems today, I'll be lucky. Eventually, I'm going to change all three of these. Item template, edit item template, and insert template. And to be fair, that's a little bit of a pain. All right. Uh, it would be nice if we could just change one template and it took effect for all of them. But it doesn't work that way. All right. So I will go and I will first change the edit item template. Remember when these templates appear. These templates correspond to the modes that a details view can be in. The item template and alternating item template are when you are in read-only mode. So when you're displaying the data in a non-editable manner, and your options are to delete or insert or delete uh, and and edit, that's the template that's going to take effect. And we're going to leave that as a label for now. All right. The edit item is of course when we go into edit mode, and the insert item is when we go into insert mode. Now I can't really think of a case where I would have different rules for an edit versus an insert, right? I mean, it's not like, you know, if you validate it when you insert it, you're probably going to want to validate it when you edit it. It only makes sense. Yeah, you have the flexibility to do that. Um, this is a case where, you know, I tell myself, quit your whining. It's doing so much of the work for you. So what if you have to do it three times? It's not that big of a deal. Uh, that is when <laughs> Visual Studio is behaving itself. It's not that big of a deal. All right, so I'm going to go here, and I'm going to go into Edit Item Template, and I'm going to remove the text box, because this is no longer a text box. So I'm going to go and delete that. And I'm going to go here, Refresh, and I'm going to create I'm going to create a new SQL data source. What's my new SQL data source for? Well, I'm going to make that a drop down. All right? And I'm going to make that a drop down that is populated from the division table. So this this drop down 
is going to ha uh, is going to be a list of all the divisions that are in the table. That's a different data set than what the page is built on, right? The page is a list of, not a list, but the selected instructor that I want to edit. So SQL Data Source 1 on the page is simply uh, the one instructor, the one faculty member that I'm pulling up, all right? This is a list of divisions. Well, a list of divisions is different than a faculty member. So this requires a different data source. Again, that's sort of my test to see if you need a new data source or not. Because sometimes you don't need a new data source. All right? But describe in words what that data source is to contain. And if the words are like the same, then you can use the same data source. If the words are different, then you need a different data source. So in this case, the page shows one faculty member, and the, this drop-down is going to show a list of divisions. Well, a list of divisions is clearly not one faculty member, so we need that. The other thing to keep in mind is don't try to combine everything into one data source. All right? Uh, a lot of times, you will have a bunch of smaller data sources instead of one mammoth data source. So, for example, if I had a page where I wanted to edit um, faculty people, and I wanted to add their announcements, and I wanted to edit what courses that they're offering, and so on. I wouldn't try to combine everything into one giant data source and share all those three things with it. I would create separate data sources and separate user interface elements for that. Okay, so now I'm going to configure the data source, so I need to, yeah, go ahead. Could you just, um, like, going off of that, could you just put in, say, like, a grid view and then uh, just add, like, columns and then put in data sources in each one and just, like, build it from that? Exactly. Well, well, you could use, you could, you could put data sources for each column if you were referencing another table. Okay. So you wouldn't do that, like, like something, for example, when we did the division table. The division table just had a couple of columns and it didn't, relate to any other table. Right. You wouldn't take that approach there. Right. All right. But in the case of faculty, maybe there is a division. Maybe there is a department. You know, maybe there is a this and a that. Where they're all related to other tables. You'd have the faculty table in the main SQL data source and then for each column you'd have a separate data source for the related table. If, so if that's what you're asking. All right. Let's click, uh, let's refresh. Let's go and quickly try to configure this data source. I'm going to use my connection string. I am going to pick from the division table. And I'm going to pick everything. Remember, even if you're not going to display the ID, you want to have the ID available. Because the ID is what you're going to put back into the faculty table, not the name. So I'm going to pick full name and division ID. And I'm going to put an order by because I want to sort this by the full name. Uh, next, I can test the query. And then I can finish. Whew. That wasn't so bad. All right. Now, I'm going to go in and I'm going to add a drop-down list. And we did drop-down list like in the first half of the course, but the drop-down list that we did in the first half of the course were unbound. All right? What does unbound mean for a drop-down list? Yeah, we don't have a database data source attached to it. Uh, if you remember, what we did in, uh, in that case is we went in to edit items and we manually edited the items. All right. So if you had a drop down that wasn't related to another table, like if you had a yes or no question, you know, do you want pepperoni on this pizza? Yes or no. All right. You're not pulling yes or no from a different table, right? It's just yes and no, you know. Um, in which case you could go into edit items. Here though, we have a data source that we want to tie this to. So I'm going to go in and say 
choose data source, source two, source two, and this is important. The data field to display. I want to show the full name of the division, right? So the name of display is what the user is going to see, what ought to make sense to the user. And the data field for the value is what is behind the scenes, is what the script is going to use to put into the database. So we want to show the name of the division. So arts and humanities, this, that, and so on the line. We want to take whatever key is associated with that and stuff that into the faculty table. So we'll pick full name is what we're displaying. The data field, though, is going to be the division ID. And we're all set. Now, we have one more thing to do. All right? And this is the one that sometimes people forget. We've just created a dropdown that shows division ID or, or shows you division names and the value is a division ID. We need to tie this to the database field. We need to say where the data is going to come from initially and where the data is going to go. All right, does that make sense? In other words, this is going to go into the faculty table. So we have to say what field in the faculty table gets the division ID. So we do that by saying edit data bindings. And we can tie that to the division ID. Now, this can be tricky. I've never quite figured out uh, why Visual Studio does this. But notice I clicked on field binding, and then it gave me a drop down of all the columning. And I want to put that source data source field. And I want to put that source data source ID. All right? So that part was easy. Sometimes, though, for some unexplained reason, field binding is disabled, and I can't click that box. If that's the case, just put in there, select custom binding, and put in there the word bind, parenthesis, and the name of the field. And that works just as well. Don't ask me why. Today must be my lucky day, because that one worked. All right? And now we should be good to go. So I will click OK. And we should be all set. All right. Let me go and run this. So I go here. Notice that it still shows the division ID. It doesn't show the division name. Why is that? Because we only change the edit item template. All right which means that in read-only mode and in insert mode, it's not going to work. All right? It's not going to work uh, the drop-down, only in edit mode. So I click on edit now, and boom, engineering and business information technology, which is his correct division, right? That is division ID 1, all right? I can then select... Let's say he transfers to Math and Sciences and click Update. And now shows his division ID as 7. If I go in to edit again, notice the drop down now shows Math and Sciences. And I can go in and transfer him back. And he's back in there. Let me go over this one more time. Because there's like one extra step that sometimes people forget. All right, so let's go over this to, to review. We made, a data, uh, we made a template column from that field, and we did the edit item template. So far, so good. We created a drop-down, all right, and we created a SQL data source. The SQL data source was for a list of division IDs. Most of the drop-downs that we pick here are going to be something simple like that. Just a list of divisions, a list of anything else that is a table related to this table. 
we make sure we pick the key, right? Because we're going to need the primary key. Now, this is one thing that's important, right? Because it's good to have one part keys because this makes this this makes this easy to do. How would you do this if there were if your if your key to the division, let's say, was a multiple part key? That'd be tricky to do, right? So it's good to have one part keys for this reason, all right? So anyhow, SQL data source is my list of divisions. I create a drop down. When I configure that drop down, I can have to configure two things. I have to choose data source and edit data bindings. With choose data source, I define a data source, I define the display value, and I define the data field value. Okay, two different things. The, full, the display field, again, is just that, what is going to be displayed to the user. So it should be a field that is meaningful to the user. All right. The ID is probably not meaningful to the user. You know, um, if this was my job to maintain this, I have no idea what any of them, but I know engineering is number one. Right? Engineering, business, and IT is number one. Just because that's my division and I put it in first. All right. None of the other divisions I remember what their number is. So <coughs> I can't expect anyone else to remember any of this stuff if I'm the person that made the database and I don't even remember it. Right? On the other hand, people will recognize it based on the name. All right? The data field is, that we're going to have for the value of the dropdown is typically going to be the primary key to that field. Again, you can only pick one thing, so it's good if that primary key only has one part. It becomes difficult, and you have to take a different approach if there's a multiple, multiple part primary key. Okay, so everyone clear on that. We choose a data source. We choose what the user's going to see. We choose the value sort of behind the scenes of the drop down. The extra thing that we have to do is we have to edit data bindings. And that says where we're going to put the data once we've picked it. All right? Where we're going to put the data where after we pick it. Let me just intentionally mess this up. And I hope I, I, hope I don't regret this. I'm going to clear out this. I'm going to clear out the binding. All right? And I'm going to test this. I can edit him. Notice it didn't show me his proper division. He's supposed to be in engineering, if you remember, right? Division ID 1. It doesn't show me that. In other words, it didn't know. It created the dropdown correctly, but it didn't know what field in the database in the faculty table to associate that dropdown with. So it just shows me a list of divisions. And if I pick a division, social sciences, which I don't know what the ID is, but it's not one, right? And do an update, I could get an error, all right? Because I forgot to say where to put that value. So there's no value for division ID, so it blew up. Depending on how the code is, it, it, if division ID wasn't required, it would go and look like it saved it, but it wouldn't have changed it, all right? So, if it's not saving it correctly, and it's not pulling it up correctly, you probably forgot to go in and edit the data bindings, which specifies what to do with the data once you've selected the division ID. And usually it's going to be to put it in the division ID. It's going to be the same column name that you're pulling from the dropdown. But it's in a different table. So what we've defined is that we want to drop down from the division table that contains the name and the ID. 
And the ID that we select, we want to put in the ID of the faculty table. And we need to then do the, uh, we need to configure the data source and edit the data bindings to accomplish that complete job. So now we're back to in business. If I go in and pull up him, it will show me division ID of one. If I edit it, it shows me engineering, business, and IT, and I can go and change it to whatever I want, and the update works. All right, we have a winner. All right, but not quite yet, because in read-only mode, it still shows me the division ID. Well, even in read-only mode, I want to see the name and not the division ID. Again, don't do a join. If you're maintaining this table, only select the one table and use drop-downs to show the data. So I can use a drop-down to show the data from the division table and show the division name. Essentially, I'm just going to repeat what I did in the previous example, except I'm going to do it on the, uh, I'm going to do it on the Item template, thank you. And if I had one, I'd do it in the alternating item template as well. By the way, everything I'm doing here, you could also do on a grid view. All right, so let me close this. Let me go in and edit the item template. Delete the label. I no longer want to display in a label. I want to drop down. So I will go and, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> where's my toolbar? Oh, did I freeze? Yes, I did. I probably froze when I did that. Which I sort of even did not. It's more of a nervous tick sort of thing than actually wanting to click on it. It's kind of like salad tongs, right? Has anyone ever picked up a pair of salad tongs without... <laughs> Clicking them a few times? I don't think so. Same sort of thing going on here. All right. So let's try this again. Hopefully, we'll be able to get it to work. If you reviewed Canvas over the weekend, you'll see something that I think might be good news. Did anyone see good news on Canvas for this class? Uh, you don't know about good? Okay. It, was, it was information. Okay, what was the information? So there wasn't any new yeah, No new lab. We've I've defined that, all the, all that the labs. Includes 10, like that includes 10. That includes 10, yeah. So that doesn't mean that we're done today. You know, when you're done with 10, there won't be any more. So I won't post one for next week. I won't post one for the week after or the week after. Uh, I'm doing that because, not because I've taught everything that I want to do, but I want you to incorporate stuff into your project. I want to make sure your project is really good. So get the labs out of the way, knocked off, and then really focus on, the dry, on, on, the, on that. And I'll try to give some time in class to even work on it. We really don't have many class sessions left. After today, we have four class sessions left, right? We have this Thursday, next Tuesday, off for Thanksgiving, and then the following week, Tuesday and Thursday. So we don't have a lot to go. And that amazes me, maybe it amazes you, I don't know, because I swear, I still am thinking like, now what's my schedule for Tuesdays and Thursdays? Oh yeah, but um, it's amazing just how, uh, how quickly the semester went. Okay.
block data source. All right. And I was in faculty maintenance. And I was editing templates. Oh, wrong one. I want to do this one. And I want to do the item template for division ID. So I'm going to go and drag a SQL data source. Doing the same thing I did before which is comforting, and a drop-down list. All right, going to configure my SQL data source. It's going to be identical than before. Again, kind of a pain I have to do this, but quit your whining. All right, quit my whining because, hey, it's still better. You know, this did so much for us that we can't complain that it doesn't do everything for us. So I'm going to go in to my data source, configure it, Pick my connection. Pick that I want stuff from the division table. Division ID and full name. This is good practice, right? I'm going to set the order by. It's always good when you have a grid view or a, a drop down or anything to select the order by. Uh, simply because, strictly speaking, a database table doesn't have any order to it. You might think, well, it's in primary key order. And it probably will be. But really, that's up to the DBMS when you do a select statement. So if there's an order you want it in, put the order by in. OK. Uh, next, I can test it. Finish. All right. Now I have to do the two things with the drop down. I have to. Uh, configure data source, and I have to edit the bindings. So, go in here, click this, choose data source. I'm going to pick SQL data source 3. The field I want to display, again, is the name. That's what I want to show the user. It has to be intelligible to the user. And select a data field for the drop-down list, division ID. All right. Click OK. I'm good to go. Now, last thing I have to do, which again, it's possible to forget, is edit data bindings. And as predicted, sometimes that's disabled for no reason whatsoever. So if that is, you simply put in the expression, bind, and the name of the field in the faculty table or whatever field is the details view is based on, and click OK. By the way, there is something two-way data binding. You would check that as well. Make sure if, if you pick field binding, you would make sure two-way data binding is checked as well. All right, so now when I go and pull this up, Now it shows social sciences, which I believe is what we did. Allows me to pick that, though, even though I'm reading in, in read-only mode. Ooh, I don't like that. Do you like that? No. What should we do instead? What can we do instead? And there's probably, there's probably several ways you can handle this dilemma. But I'm simply going to make that drop-down read-only, all right? And, or disabled. And in that way, the data will show, but the user won't be able to change it. So how do I do that? Well, again, that's edit the template. I am pointing at the drop-down list. And enabled. I'll set that to false. Okay. Now if I go and run this, I can 
see it, but I can't edit, uh, touch it until I go into edit mode, then I'm able to do that. All right. Hit cancel. All right, let's see other things that we might, we might want to do with this. Well, there's all kinds of styling things we can do. Remember, I'm leaving sort of those aside. Um, spend some time to style it to make it look right. Let's look at what happens when we go to delete it. All right, that's, that's a weird error. Well, what do we do? Well, we do the same things we did before, right? I didn't like the fact that it tried to delete it right off, and I also didn't like the fact that it uh, gave me an ugly error. So let's handle both of these one at a time. So, how do I put a confirm when you click on delete? What do I, what's my first step in doing that? Well, I do need to do that. Uh, I need to put a confirm in there. But is that default behavior for that delete button? No. We're, we're going off, off roading with this. We're, we're, we're writing our own stuff. Because that's not default behavior, we have to make a template column for it. So that's the first step that we have to do. So let's go at and look at this and edit templating, temp, edit, and edit, te and template editing. Go into edit fields. I'm going to make this command field a template field. I can now go and edit the templates, and I can edit field 9. And the item template has edit and delete in it. All right. I can now go on here and I can put in the on client click and I can add the confirm. And we say return okay to delete and now We go into here, we try to delete it. What? Oh, return confirm. Okay to delete. Cancel, fit delete, now we get the ugly air. So how do we handle the ugly air? How do we handle the ugly air? Well, the way we handle it is remember that there are events on details views and grid views that fire off before and after any database operation. So they fire off before an insert, after an insert. There's a different event for each. Before a edit, after an edit. Before a delete, after a delete. In this case, what we want to do is we want to look to see if there's an exception after the deletion. So we want to see if the deletion failed because of an exception and if there is, we want to display an error message. So I'm going to go here and put a label on the page. All right. And I want to go to my details view. So I'm going to go into source view for this. And 
on the details view. I want to put an on, and I have all, I can see all my events here. On item created, on item deleted, on item deleting, on item inserted, inserting, updated, updating. So the ING one is before it happens, the ED one is after it happens. So after we deleted it, I want to put some code to look and see what happened and see if it, if it worked or not. So I'll say on item deleted equals, I pick create a new event, because they're, I'm not going to call the page load event after this, so I say create a new event. It gives me the name of the event, and it puts it in the CS file. Item detail one, item deleted. Here's where I write the code to handle this. Does anyone recall what the code looks like? Well, remember, we get detail view, details view deleted event arguments. That is the report of what happened during the delete. Okay? And there's a lot of properties of that. Like, we can tell how many rows were affected, I think. I think that's one of the properties. But the thing that we're interested in is whether there was an exception or not. So, if E dot, whoops, if E dot exception, here's all the other things. We can see the affected rows and blah, blah, blah. We can get information about the delete that was attempted if we need to. But basically, I just want to see if there's an exception. So if that is not equal to null, what does that mean? What does it mean if the exception is not equal to null? It means that there was an exception. All right. Uh, checking to see if it's null is checking to see if there's something in it. If it ran successfully, there won't be anything in it. There won't be an exception object created. And therefore, that would be null. If it's not null, it means that it's, there's something in it, which means that there was a problem. So if there's something in it, there was a problem, what are we going to do? Well, set the text for label 3 to problem deleting and the probable cause is there are rows in other tables for this faculty person all right so that's probably what's wrong If we're going to test this, we should test that, right? We should create a faculty person and try to delete them. If we just created them and they don't have any rows in other tables associated with them, we should be able to delete them, no problem. But if there are rows associated with them, we shouldn't be able to delete them. And we should get this error message. The other thing I have to do is I have to tell the .NET framework that we have this exception handled. So I have to set the exception handled variable to true. Hint, hint. All right. Everything you turn in from this point forward, in fact, probably stuff that you've already turned in, should have that code if you're doing an update or a deletion or an insert or code that looks like that, right? Because the default framework doesn't handle the those database errors. It handles them in an ugly error. Therefore, you have to write code to handle it, all right? So at the very, very, very least, every one of your things should have this for an insert, if it's possible, an update, and a delete, all right? You can just kind of clone that and put that in there. All right, now if it did delete, we don't want to stick around on that page anymore. We just want to 
we just want to leave, right? So I'm going to redirect back to the faculty list. Otherwise, it would try to pull up the same faculty person again, and they're gone. And it would give us a, a blank screen. So, let's set the faculty list as our start page. Again, keep in mind that we would probably control this, right? We wouldn't allow people to edit stuff if they were not... Um, not logged in or whatever, not, a, not an administrator. Uh, again, we, gave, we went over that in other examples, so I won't do that here. I'm going to go into the database, actually, and put in a brand new faculty person that I can delete. be able to delete that, right, because it couldn't possibly have anything in a related table. So let's run this. You know, to delete this new, to, to test this new functionality we have, we need to test both that we can delete someone that can be deleted and we can't delete someone that can't be deleted. So I'll go into this guy. Delete is okay to delete. Okay. Gives me an error. Perfect. We go back and we try to delete this guy. Delete. Okay to delete. Gives me a problem deleting. Hmm. That's weird. Let's look. And should work, right? Can we change them? Yeah. Something's wrong with the delete. How are we going to troubleshoot this? How would you troubleshoot this if you had to? Well, let's think of your options. You could sit there and stare at things. All right, and hope that the air jumps out. All right? You could start Googling stuff. You could run the bugger. <clears throat> All those things might sort of have their place in the debugging process. But the first thing I would do is I don't think the GUI view is going to give us much information about this. I would go instead and look at the code view. Because a code view I can actually see what the delete statement is to see if there's a problem, see what the delete parameters are, and maybe figure out something. We actually could run debug and look at information. In fact, let's do that just for just for laughs. I'm going to put a breakpoint in here because I'm going to see exactly what happened when I deleted it, when I tried to delete it. Because that might give us some clues. I think looking at the code will be better. But I haven't done a lot of debugging this semester, so let's go into debugger. Delete. And I'll say delete. OK to delete. Yes. OK, I'm there. Let's look. I'm getting that same weird exception. An entry with the same key already exists. That's weird. Weird error. Let's look at what we have available. We can look and get details on the exception. 
we can get a stack trace that shows a list of all the instructions that were called. We can look at E, deleted row, affected row zero, so it did, really didn't delete anything. There's the exception. Let's look at the keys. There's one key. We can't see what that is. It is a faculty ID, so it knows a faculty ID is the key. The values knows it's one. Could look at some of these things and looks like it's trying to delete where the faculty ID equals six. That's what it looks like to me. Let's see if that is correct. Yeah. Alright. Do you see how I went and look through? Like I said, this has tons of information about what happened. So you can see how many rows were actually deleted. You can see uh, what key it used to try to do the deletion, what the value of that key was, and so on. All right? Somewhere on here, you can probably see the actual delete command. can get some information there. That kind of showed me that the key looks correct, right? I mean, it's trying to delete the thing that has a faculty ID of six. So that part kind of looks correct. It wasn't somehow deleting the wrong person. So let's look at the code view here of this. And let's look at the statement. at the wrong place. It, should, it will be in the SQL data source. Delete parameters or faculty ID. That's good. Let's look at the delete statement. The delete command is delete from faculty where faculty ID equals question mark.
I do a, doing a good job of impersonating someone that doesn't have a clue why I'm getting that error? Right, let's put the breakpoint back in. Because now what I'm going to do is I'm going to Google that error message. Because that seems to me a weird error to get when I'm trying to delete something. Oh, that's kind of cute. It tells me what could be wrong for the problem, and it says maybe you got your if statement flipped, the, the, the if and the else. Nice bit of advice there. So let's go in and try to delete this. And I'm going to copy this exception. Delete from detail view, details view, exception, I get this error. I tried to delete from a grid view. I had a button to delete, and I duplicated the key in the button name. I found the problem. See what that says. Let's look at the button name. going to take a stab at changing these guys. Is that what you're going to suggest? Yeah. Let's try that. It was like I had a similar like situation where like when you do the template or when you create template fields it like just keeps reusing. Right. Right. And I, I think that's what that person is saying. So let's try this. If this doesn't work I'm going to throw up my arms and give up.
tape didn't didn't save it. Okay. Uh, let me get it back to where I only had the one problem. Actually, let's try it this way. why I'm having this, this problem deleting it. Uh, I'll try to do some research. Um, if you want to, God, I hate to say these words. If you find a problem with this, I might give extra credit points. Um, but yeah, um, We're not getting the ugly air doing that, but that's a problem because you should be able to delete that person uh, because there's no related rows associated with them. And just the, 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 the air that we're getting just seems weird. Um, I don't know. I'll have to look. Now, uh, pretty much everything else we did, you know, we would do the same thing for insert and all that. Next time we'll pick up with the insert for this, and I hope to have that. Uh, this issue resolved. Um, I hope between now and then, uh, and then to have uh, your lab uh, labs graded, your design graded. If you're really interested in that, I could actually grade them in lab. You can come in and sit with me, and I'll grade them right, right there with you present. If you're dying to know, if you feel it's holding you back. If not, I will try to have it done by or on Thursday. All right, so that's all I had. We'll see you over in lab.